Hello friends! Come and join me as we make this skull and bones wind spinner. Simple process, easy for beginners, little challenging, but it can be done. So come join me and let's make this together. The materials and the tools we're going to use to make this bones and skull wind spinner we have two yarns by red heart this one is a white and this one if i'm correct is called newspaper or zebra but it is a variegated the reason why i'm using this is because if we use just solid black it's kind of hard to see in the video the hook that we're using is a 4.5 millimeter pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle. We're going to begin with the variegated yarn. Of course, you can choose any color you want. This will be the center of the uh, wind spinner. So let's pull out uh, and create a long tail. I have about 10, 12 inches here. These will be used for the bottom for the braid. So let's place a slip knot on our hook and chain 31. Please continue until you have 31. Please pause your video. Now even though I have 31 chains here, if you choose to make yours shorter or longer, I encourage you to do that. Um, if you do make it longer, please advance forward on the making of the bones so you'll know how many bones you'll be putting on your wind spinner. The more uh, chains, the more bones. Okay, the bones will hold up, but I'm just saying, uh, if you choose to make it longer, be aware of what you're getting yourself into because it, the bones do take up some yarn. So after we have 31, we're going to do a half double crochet in each of the chains. So we have three parts to our chain. We want to pick up just one part. So insert your hook under the top chain, pull up a loop, yarn over through all three on your hook. Okay, so one half double crochet per chain. All the way to the end you should have 30 of course you know while doing this video to the end okay so I'll meet you at the end of the row do not cut your yarn I'll show you what to do next so after our last half double crochet take your yarn and measure it to the length of the tail that you had originally started out with and then go ahead and cut it. Then take that one yarn. Let's finish off our stitch by pulling it through that last loop on our hook. Okay, this will be used as part of the decoration uh, for when we attach our skull. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place a short tail with a slip knot on our hook and I'm going to bring my camera up closer but we're going to put uh, a half double crochet into our first um, stitch here past the chain one so if you just hang on a second let me bring my camera up closer Okay, some of you know that I do use a GoPro when doing this, so I cannot change my um, forward and backwards as filming, which is unfortunate. <laughs> so with our little tail over here, place your finger on the loop, yarn over, and through that first stitch. And pull up a loop, yarn over through two, Okay, and let's bring our tail over so we can continue crocheting over that also. 
and then yarn over through the last two. And that completes our first double crochet. In this same space, we want to add two more. We are going to be placing three double crochets per stitch all the way down. So by the end of this row, <laughs> 30 times 3, so we'll have 90 double crochets. So here we are at our next stitch. You'll see the black. This is my tail. I'm going to crochet over that as well. Place three double crochets in that stitch. Pretty soon, with all of these double crochets in one stitch, you'll start to see your work curl. That's okay. Don't freak out. <laughs> Look what I just did. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I grabbed the wrong end. All right, so continue on with three double crochets per stitch all the way down to the end of the row. And don't do like I did and grab your tail. Yes, this is my blooper and I'm going to leave it in. So I'll see you at the end of this row. When you do get to the end, um, cut your length to your tail and then finish off your stitch. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So, at the end of three double crochets per stitch, we have this nice, now I didn't curl this, it curled all by itself, little corkscrew looking thing. Okay, and remember, you had to cut your tail. Hopefully you didn't do like I did and start crocheting with the tail. <laughs> I still can't get over that, but I have to leave that in there because I thought it was funny. If you didn't think it was funny, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so these three double crochets have a purpose for each bone that we're going to be putting on. We're going to be um, putting on 30 bones, okay? So we have our center double crochet, our end, our right end, and our left end. So Let's get a, I find it easier to work with smaller amounts. Let's place a slip knot on our hook. And we're going to be working with a chainless single crochet foundation. And if you're new to that, well, I'm going to show you step by step on what to do. So, in the center of the three, let's go ahead and start with a slip stitch and chain two. Okay, so once we get started with that, um, you're going to find out how simple this is really. So since I'm on my GoPro, let me bring the camera up closer so I can show you more directly on how to do the chainless single crochet fountain foundation stitch. So after our chain two, <clears throat> I want you to point to point out again that we have three parts of our chain. Okay. In doing the chainless single crochet foundation stitch, you always want to pick up two parts of the chain. So we're going to insert our hook under, we're going to skip our first chain and go back to our, the first chain by the hook. We're going to go to the second chain, which is basically above the slip stitch of where we started and we're going to draw up a loop. Now don't jump ahead of me. We're not going to do a single crochet right now. So we're going to go yarn over and through the first loop on the hook and stop right there. I want you to take note of this chain that you just created 
because that's the one we're going to be inserting our hook in after we complete the single crochet. So we've got the two loops on the hook, yarn over through both of those. That's just like a single crochet. And we have completed one chainless single crochet foundation stitch. It's a mouthful, I know. So now always on the first one, this is what we need to do. We need to enlarge the loop, take your hook out, and on the right side, double crochet. We're just going to pick up one part of that. We're going to put our hook back into the loop, tighten it up, not tight tight, just tighten it up, and bring it through that chain on the right double crochet. Now if you need to enlarge it just a little, that's fine. Then we're going to go to the chain that I pointed out. So here we got two right here. We're going to draw up a loop. Okay, so now we're going to be getting our second stitch. The saying all that is a big mouthful. <laughs> okay, so yarn over through one loop because we have to have that to create the next foundation stitch and then yarn over through both of the loops. Now, you're wondering why are we attaching a single crochet foundation stitch onto this one? It's to help support with the weight and to make it so when it's completed, it'll lay flat. So it's not flopping, you know, and it's just hanging on by one stitch. It's that it, this this bone is actually going to be hanging on by three the three um, double crochets here. All right. So we've completed two. So into that chain stitch again. Let's do number three. So we pulled up a loop. Yarn over through that first loop and then yarn over through that second loop. Now for those of you who are familiar with our stitch, uh, we're going to be doing a total of six of them. But for those of you who are still learning, I'm going to go with you every step of the way on this bone and on the next bone. Okay, so we're going to turn it over just a little bit and you see that little V stitch there. So insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over through the first loop, yarn over through the second loop. Let's do this again. Remember go through one and then go through two. So how many do we have so far you ask? We have one, two, three, four, and we just completed our fifth one. So we want to do one more. Pull up a loop through the first one and then yarn over through the second one. Okay, so we have a nice little foundation row right here. Now we're going to add the little curly parts. So chain three. Now carefully go back and turn it so that you can see the chains right here on the top. Right here in that last chain, we want to insert our hook, but first yarn over and then insert it under two. Okay, you'll also notice that you'll have that third one there. Okay, you don't want to pick all that up. You just want to pick up the two. So you want to pull through a loop and we're going to enlarge it because we're going to start a puff stitch. So we want it as long as that chain three. So place your finger back over the top of that and that'll help hold this, that yarn in place. So yarn over, let's go through that same hole and stretch it out, yarn over and through that same hole, 
stretch it out we're just doing three times so yarn over aim your hook down okay you notice how I'm pinching the loops here and then bring it through stopping just before the chain three loop then yarn over through this will close off the puff stitch through both of those loops on your hook okay then chain three and into that same space slip stitch <coughs> We're going to do this again <laughs> in the same stitch. So this will be puffed over here in a second. So let's chain three. Yarn over into the same stitch as the rest of the puff stitch. Okay, stretch it up. There's one. And there's two. And there's three okay pinch that bottom make sure your hook is aiming down go through all those loops yarn over pull through the two on the hook and then chain three and then slip stitch right here Okay, now I'm going to loosen my loop to show you what we have so far. We're not done yet, but here's part of a bone. <laughs> okay, so let's go back. We've completed this one here. Here's our next stitch, single crochet. One, single crochet in the next. We're going to do a total of five, coming all the way down. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And it looks like you want to do something here, but you don't. Leave that alone. Whoops, I'm out of camera range. Sorry. Don't do anything there. Okay, so of our three double crochets, in the left of the three go through both of the loops and slip stitch and we have one completed bone so you ready to move on to the second one i know you are you're going to love this when it's done. Okay, so on our second one, we have our three. Okay, so this is, here's our three. So we're going to slip stitch through the right double crochet and slip stitch to the center double crochet, going through both loops on both of those um, slip stitches chain two, skip the first chain, and we're going to go back and pick up two parts of the first chain that we made and drop a loop. Yarn over through one loop on the hook and yarn over through two loops on the hook. Okay, so we have this right here. Remember, this is number one. So enlarge your loop a little bit. I'm trying to keep the other stuff out of the way so that the camera focuses on just what we're doing here. So we're gonna go back. Now, this one right here is your center slip stitch. So we're gonna go back to the right one. If you're not sure, open it up and of the three, You'll see here's our right one. Just pick up one part of that. And then go ahead and tighten your loop on your hook and bring it through. 
that slip stitch. Okay, then let's go back and pick up the two parts of the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over through one loop. You notice how this one is still here and then yarn over through two, okay? So we have now completed two um, of the stitch. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to our next one. So we're going to go here, drop a loop, yarn over through one, yarn over through two. Okay, we're going to continue this until we have six. Remember to pick up those chains, two loops of those chains. All right, so let's see how many I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's chain three. And find that last one. Okay, yarn over. We're gonna make our puff stitch. So pull up a loop. Let's stretch it out. Yarn over through that same stitch. Stretch it out one more time. Aim your hook down. Chain three. Slip stitch where the puff goes into that sixth chainless single crochet foundation stitch. <laughs> And then we're going to do our second bump of our bone. So chain three. Let's do our puff stitch again. There's one. Two. And three. One, two, three chains. And slip stitch. Okay, and then we're going to go right straight into the next. So here we're going to have five single crochets. Whoops. I put yeah, I put it in the right spot. One, two. Three, four, and five. Okay, then slip stitch into that third, the left double crochet of the three, and then recognize the other three. We're going to slip stitch two more times to the center. Okay, and then we're going to start all over again. So here's our bones. They're going to be 30 bones. This will take a little bit of time. So I encourage you to be patient with it. Take your time. Don't push yourself too hard and please don't get impatient with it. If you make a mistake and it starts to frustrate you, set it down, walk away, turn the video on. And if you have any questions, I'm here for you, okay? This is something that we're not really accustomed to doing. Most people just do chains and then single crochets. And so I want to do something a little bit different. So I know this is going to be a little bit of a challenge. So continue with these all the way to the end. And of course, in your last one, we have three double crochets. So when you get to the last one, just slip stitch 
leave a long tail go ahead and cut it and then I'll be able to show you what we're going to do next so please pause your video this will take a little time you may have to come back and see me so we can so I can show you how to finish this up well that took some time didn't it <laughs> okay so what we're going to do now is let's coil it up according to how it's rolled on on here so that you can go ahead and lay it flat okay so we're going to take each one of our bones we're going to stretch them out just a little bit making sure each one is flat and not twisted and then I think I jumped ahead of you on this um, I went ahead and put a hanging string on my very first bone right here so I made a hanging string about 18 inches long okay I still got my end I need to weave in but if you let it sit here for a few few hours the bones will all want to sit out straight okay press it down everything will be fine So the next thing we're going to move on to is our skull. And if you choose to add more bones to the bottom of your skull, I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So weave in any of your ends like I need to do. Don't worry about this just yet. And let it relax and rest just for a little while. Okay, so that way when we do pick it up, you'll see the bone effect. Hopefully the dogs don't come in and say, hmm, chewy treat. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our skull. So it doesn't take a lot of yarn. We can use a scrap amount. The hook that I'm using is a 4.5 millimeter. So let's go ahead and pull out some yarn. This will also be part of the hanger. So make it as long as you like, however long you might want. I have about 12 inches here. Let's place a slip knot on our hook. Let me set the camera in a little closer and let's get then we'll get started. Okay, so let's begin with a chain of nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We're going to skip our first chain here. In the second chain, single crochet. In our next chain, half double crochet. In our next chain, double crochet. <clears throat> Over our next two chains, we're going to do a double crochet two together. So yarn over, insert it into the first chain, pull up a loop, yarn over through two loops, then yarn over and into the second chain, pull up a loop, 
yarn over through two and we'll have three loops on our hook yarn over through all three the next stitch or the next chain I should say one double crochet half double crochet and then single crochet so this is what we have so far let's chain one turn our work but what we're going to do right here is we're going to add a stitch so let's chain one more time so right here add a half double crochet we're going to half double crochet across and then the last one we'll add two half double crochets my house it's the first of October and it's already starting to feel cold as I was watching the weather they said we're gonna possibly have an early winter so here I am at the last one two half double crochets you should have a total of nine half double crochets on this row Let's chain one and turn. And in our first one, two half double crochets. One all the way across to the last one where you will add two. We should have 11 half double crochets in this row. You're going to find that making this skull motif or applique, whichever you choose it to be, will go very quickly. It just seems slow because of the tutorial. And I think you're going to have fun making these and maybe making a a banner with them on it also okay so let's double check and make sure we have 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 we want the odd number chain one and turn so we're going to be shaping our eye the top part of our eye in this row so half double crochet half double crochet over the next two stitches slip stitch over the next three stitches half double crochet the next two slip stitch remember to make your your loops a little large so it won't pull in and then in the last two half double crochet all right we have like a little wave action going on here Let's chain one and turn our work. So in our first one here, we're going to half double crochet and then chain four. One, two, three, and four. And if you're like me, 
I need to pull some more yarn out. <laughs> Okay, sorry for the delay. Now, we have our three um, double crochets here, or half double crochets here. So what I'd like for you to do is to turn it around and see where our middle one is, and this is where we want our stitches to go. So go ahead and place it from the back side, and then turn it around. And you can place your thumb there, that way you know where to place that next stitch. So, half double crochet, chain two, and then half double crochet in that same spot. So we have like our little nose right here. Chain four. All right, now for our last stitch, we want to give the illusion like we have here. See how it looks like it has a chain stitch here? So we want to give that same illusion over here on this side. So yarn over, we're gonna get into that last stitch. We're gonna pull up a loop, and then into this chain stitch, we're gonna pull up another loop. And it'll, this'll give the balance that we need for the other side. So just go through that first one, okay, and then go through all the rest of them. There we go, and it'll give us the same look that we have here over here. All right, so let's chain two, turn our work. Now over the chain, single crochet, just kind of pull it over, chain one. Now in this last chain of the chain four for the eye, place a single crochet. Now when I go into my chain, I always like to pull up two parts of that chain so that it doesn't stretch. chain one. We're going to place two double crochets right here into the chain two space. Chain one and then down onto the chain on the other side here. Single crochet. Okay, and that kind of, see how it drops it down just that little bit? Chain one, and then over that chain four, single crochet, chain two, and slip stitch here into that chain one at the end of the row. I had to cough. <laughs> no, I'm not sick, but I appreciate the concern. All right, so we are going to chain one, turn our work. We're going to slip stitch all the way up here to that first chain. Well, actually to the um, single crochet. So let's go ahead and slip stitch across. Remember that if you, when you slip stitch into your chains, that you will pick up um, two parts of that chain. All right, so here we are, we're, we're across. Let's chain three. OK, 
Okay, so into the chain one space, we're going to do a treble. So wrap your yarn twice into that chain one space, yarn over through two, yarn over through two, and yarn over through two. Okay, we have this space over the two double crochets of the previous row in the chain one. We're going to add trebles to each one of those spaces there. So yarn over twice, Okay, and here's the chain one. All right, then chain three. We're going to slip stitch to the top of the single crochet. And this is what we have so far. But what I've done is I wanted to reinforce the bottom here. So now this is your preference. If you choose not to do this, this is okay. I'm going to go ahead and chain one and turn my work and I'm going to slip stitch and each chain ends top of the stitch around. Remember to keep your loops that you create loose so that it doesn't pull your work in tight. Um, it, to me, it gives a little bit more definition to the bottom of the jaw. And, I don't know, to me it just makes it look more balanced. My husband loves the Punisher look and he likes the skulls so we have a lot of skulls in his man cave <laughs> okay so here we are at the last one okay and that's the end of that row cute, isn't it? Might need a little shaping, but we'll be fine. Okay, so this one, use a needle. I'm going to go under that one. I might have the wrong size needle here. I hope not. So let's go ahead and pull it across. There we go. And you don't want it to come out, so go over, go over the one. And pick up another one, go back across. Now you're wondering about our 12 inch tail. Try to keep the weavings to a minimum. So I'm just going to kind of go through the stitching here until I get to the center. it in. Oops, went the wrong direction. <laughs> so let's lock it in. Okay, and then take the other end and we're going to come through it again. But leave a long loop here. And go around it again. Come to the back side of these stitches here. 
and weave your end in. Remember to stretch him out just a little bit to give him his shape. Cute, huh? So let's begin with a long enough tail. This will help sew it onto whatever you want to hang it onto. If not, you'll still have enough to weave in the ends for um, when you're finished with it. So we're going to do something that's called a chainless single crochet foundation. So we have a slip knot on our hook. Let me get some of the distractions out of the way. Oh, don't forget to pull out some yarn. Okay, so we're going to start off with chain two. And in our first chain, go ahead and insert your hook, but pick up two parts of the chain. Pull up a loop. Yarn over through one loop on the hook only. What that does is that sets us for the next stitch foundation. Okay? Since we have two loops on the hook, yarn over and through both of those as if you were completing a single crochet. So here's what we have right here. You can see that loop right there. Okay, it looks like a mess right now, <laughs> but it'll be okay. All right, so where your knot is, turn it back, and you can see that V stitch right there. So we're going to take our hook and just go directly where that V stitch is at. I'm going to drop a loop. Okay, so we've done one. This is number two. So yarn over and just through that first loop. Okay, and then yarn over through two loops. So we've completed the second single crochet in this chain foundation. Okay, so here's one and here's two. So if we turn it back, here we got our knot end. You can see that V right there. So we're going to insert the hook under those two loops of that V. And we're going to start for number three. So pull up a loop, yarn over through one loop only, and then through two loops. Okay? So if you were looking at this, you can see the three single crochets already, and the three looks like a chain. So let's do it again. Here's our V right here. So place your hook under those two. I guess my shadow is not helping much, huh? Right there. Pull up a loop. Yarn through the first one. And then yarn through the second one. Okay, so we've done one two, three, we've completed four. We need a total of 14, so let's continue on. If you have problems, please pause the video and go back to the beginning where we start this so that I can continue on. And I'm gonna continue until I have 14 single crochets. One, two, three, four, here's number five.
Here's number nine. Ten. Eleven. Now another thing too, just for your information, you can make these bones as long as short as you want. But for the video, I'm making mine with 14. Okay, so I have three more to go. Okay, so let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so we have our fourteen. So now we're going to chain three. And then to the last chain, yarn over. We're going to do a puff stitch. So drop a loop. Now pinch here on the foundation and stretch it to make it as long as the chain three. So here's one, yarn over through that same hole, two, one more time, and three. And then aim your hook down and pull through those loops and stop just before the chain three one. So this way we can close it off and then chain three. One, two, oops, three. And so back into our 14th chain right here, slip stitch. And then chain three again. We're going to do this one more time. Pull your work over if you need to. So now we're going to go into the same stitch. So yarn over, pull up a loop, and stretch it so it's the height of the chain three. So that's one. Here's two. And here's three. Okay. And then chain three and slip stitch into that same stitch. It's going to seem kind of tight, but it'll all fit. Okay, so let me pull up a loop here so you can see what we have so far. So the very first chain, single crochet, and every stitch across. Okay, just as if it was a regular stitch, pick up the two parts of that chain and continue down. Okay, I'm coming up on the end. I have one, two, three left. Okay, so I'm at the end. So if you pull up that tail just a little bit, you'll see that one loop. That's our very first chain that we placed on our hook, okay? 
So I'd like for you to slip stitch into that one loop space. Okay, we're going to do the same thing we did over here. Chain three. And let's do our puff stitch. We're going to stretch it out three times. Yarn over, aim it down, and pull it through all those loops. Chain three. Then slip stitch. Okay, and let's chain three again. Puff stitch. Chain three. And slip stitch. Okay, let's cut with some length on it. So here we have our bone. Okay, now you're wondering what these two extras are for. So take them, we're going to find the center, now if you've made yours in different widths, and sizes. One of the easiest ways to figure out where your center is is just fold it in half and that'll tell you right here. So I have one more stitch to do. Okay, so if you want to hang it, there you go. So I created a second one and I plan on putting mine with my skull that I created in another video. I'm going to take it and crisscross it, tic tac it, and then hang it from the center. Okay, so I'll show you how I'm going to do that. This is for Halloween, so I'm just going to go around it twice, and then come through to the other side, and go around it twice also. Then I'm going to find the center on my skull. And of course, my yarn fell out. and I'm going to secure it to the back of the crochet.
So here's my finished skull and bones as what you had just witnessed and created yourself. And I also did one in the variegated. I couldn't decide if I wanted it with the variegated or not. Variegated or not. Well, for the sake of the video, I made the white one so that everybody can see the final look of it. So let's join our finished skull and bones. Now remember, the bones are an option. You don't have to put the bones on it. You could just do the skull head if you wanted to. Okay, so we have our top, and here's our bottom. Now, many of you that have been following my videos, you'll know that I like to put a braid in on mine. So, let's see, we have four here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another of... Um, the variegated so that we can have two strands per braid. Let's make sure they're all about the same height or length here. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so let's take two, two and two, and let's start braiding. You want to aim it down. This is going to be the top, so we want to aim it down. And just do a light, not tight, braid. You can make it as long as you like, as short as you like, or you don't even have to add one at all. But for, for my videos and for my style, I choose to add the braid. All right, so even though I got just a real short one here, I don't have the usual six inches that I do. Let me add a few more. We're going to go ahead and place a knot on our the end of the braid here. So I have just a short knot or a short braid. So I'm just going to go ahead and take everything, wrap it around. Bring it through the overhand knot and slide it on up. Okay, we got our individual strands that we need to tighten down on. There we go. And then I got my skull here. So I'm going to take one end of my skull and I'm going to come through the braid in the center here. I'm going to bring him over and put a little overhand knot in him too. Hmm, that might be too long. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little overhand knot in him. And then I'm going to cut the ends accordingly. So I like to have a little bit of fringe on mine but not to cover too much. I'll weave that in more. And so here we go. We have now our finished wind spinner. Let me hang it up so you can see how mine looks. And I'm sure you already are appreciating what yours looks like. So what do you think? You like my skull and bones wind spinner? I think it's kind of cute. So, thanks for joining me today as we made this skull and bones wind spinner. So, till next time, Bye-bye.